there you go, ladies and gentlemen, right there, 4.30 p.m. in the big city of Manhattan. you got it tuned to HTLA Radio 1, of course, New York's best talk. And why are we playing music, you might ask? Well, hey, because it's summer and because I said so. That's right. We are playing music today. We're doing a little tribute, a, a little hats off to uh, the fine, fine boys there in the Aerosmith Rocks Band. All the way out there in little British Columbia, Canada. Yes, we are. We're doing that today for the first half hour before we go to our coffee and cigarettes Thursday double. <sighs> yeah, it's about time we got to be New York's best rock, I think. And uh, uh, there's no group that can do it better for us than these guys. You're, you're going to like what you hear. That's right. And if you don't, well, it's free. So without further ado, I'm going to get the hell off of here and get them the hell on here and rock your world. Here they are, Aerosmith Rocks. Uh, before we get into them, though, a little promo for CIFM. Show coming up. Coming up soon. Yes, it is. 98.3 CIFM and Kamloops Ford Lincoln present Tribute Trio. Three rock and roll tribute bands. One ticket, one night. broken Blaze of Glory. It's my life, it's now Aerosmith Rocks. Who made who? Friday, March 2nd, Kamloops Convention Center. Tickets are on sale now at KamloopsConventionCenter.ca or at Aura Restaurant Lounge. Must be 19 plus. Details at 98.3 CIFM.com. 98.3 CIFM. It's on. Oh, yes, it is. It is on. We got it on. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen of New York and everywhere else on the global planet, yes, here they are, ladies and gentlemen, Aerosmith rocks with sweet emotion.
Oh, yeah. That's right. Those boys, those boys right there, Aerosmith Rocks, they are going to be at Grizzfest. That's right, in Tumblr Ridge, B.C., coming up on August 1st, starting at 12 noon. It's it's going to be going to be a hopping show you if you're an Aerosmith fan you, you're gonna want to be there if you want tickets uh, let us know here at the station and uh, check out Aerosmith rocks tribute band.com
there they are. Aerosmith rocks living on the edge. Yes, HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk is now HTLA Radio 1, New York's best rock. That's right. Nobody better to do it with than the boys from Aerosmith Rocks. You can follow them on Facebook at facebook.com slash Aerosmith Rocks. And don't forget the main website, aerosmithtributeband.com. Let's get another one here from them. How about some living on the edge on HTLA Radio 1? New York's best rock. It, no, it's back in the saddle. Surprise!
is. That's right. HDLA Radio 1, New York's, whoa, best talk has just turned into New York's best rock with Aerosmith Rocks. And that, of course, was back in the saddle again. And next up, we're going to give you a little something, something. Yes, that's right. The Aerosmith boys cooking up something for you here big time. And again, follow them up on Facebook uh, at facebook.com slash Aerosmith Rocks. Don't forget the main webpage, too, uh, aerosmithtributeband.com. That's where you can find them. And, well, this is what they sound like. That's right. Walk This Way. One of my favorites on HTLA Radio 1 New York. You go there it is a little walk this way from the aerosmith rocks band here htla radio one yes we are new york's best rock and hey isn't it time for some no more no more yes it is on htla radio one
that's the boys from BC. Yes, that's right, from good old Crash Jesus' hometown, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. The one, the only Aerosmith Rocks tribute band. You want to check them out? Yes, you do. Get on over to Facebook.com slash Aerosmith Rocks or... Get on over to that domain at aerosmithtributeband.com. That's where you'll find them. And right now, we got some more from them. Yes, Aerosmith Rocks. I don't want to miss a thing on HTLA Radio 1. miss a thing either that's right gang there they were the boys of aerosmith rocks all the way from victoria british columbia canada can you believe it that's right yeah you know i used to work with the lead singer yeah we used to work together that was good then of course you know he went on to fame fortune and well endless endless pussy and 
Well, I, I took a turn for the worse and ended up here. <laughs> That's right. So so there he is. He, wow. There you go. If you want to follow that band, by the way, check them out. Facebook.com slash Aerosmith Rocks. Yes, they do. Of course, their main domain, a website, AerosmithTributeBand.com. Uh, go give them some love. Uh, well, no, screw that. Don't give them love. I need love. He, he got successful. I, I got poor and broke and... And, and I'm fighting with Google, and I don't know if I won or not. <laughs> well, that's right. I don't know if I won or not. Don't have a freaking clue, but, uh, boy, I've got the live uh, conversation uh, recorded, of course, as we always do here. Yeah, we'll get into that. Yes. Well, we got the, the good news, of course. Yes, yes. But after, of course, my special presentation of Crash's interactions with Google today... Yes, the internet giant pissed me off, and I went to war. Yes, I did. I had enough. I wasn't going to take it anymore, and you're going to get to hear all the juicy little details of that little conversation with the manager. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, well, we'll just let you be the judge to see if I won or not. How about that? Yeah. What about the stories? Yeah, well, we'll let you be the judge if I won that little uh, battle royale today, including the whole story, and it's all recorded with Dominican customer service. I love Dominican Republic, yes. Well, hey, some stories we're following today include a Malaysia official saying that the d debris found is almost certainly that of a Boeing 777. Well, Bond is set for $1 million for that officer, that security guard... Accused of killing that Ohio driver. Also, 40 years later, the Jimmy Hoffa mystery still endures as rapper Chief Keef. Well, he's got new plans, but no venue for his hologram show? That's right. Other shows were, or other stories we're following today include Cecil the Lion's death, causing a tourism drop in Zimbabwe. A shitstorm explodes here at home, of course, for the dental hunter. And the Dominican Republic fears tourism boycott now over citizenship ruling and crashes wrath. That's right. Stay tuned. It's all coming up for you next. So, hey, come on in and grab a cup. Have a seat. Light one up, gang. It's now switching back over from HDLA's best rock to, yes, indeed, New York's best talk. It's coffee time. That's all I get today. I just get to hum. You know, yeah, Dano's out there. He's, I don't want to miss a thing. And I get to hum this song. Wow. Well, hey. <laughs> I'm not bitter. No, of course not. That's right. Today, you've got it tuned to your coffee and cigarettes. A Thursday double-double. That's right. 5.06 p.m. in the city right now. A couple of minutes late because of that Aerosmith Rocks thing. But, you know, that, that, that pound for pound, dollar for dollar... Uh, you're just not getting any better rock and roll value uh, anywhere uh, for less or without a prescription or something. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. want to do some shout-outs and how-tos to, of course, uh, Leanne Thomas, possible HTLA weather girl uh, duo, of course, with uh, Stacy Watts. Yes, they're going to be the new weather girls for HTLA. That's it. Uh, HTLA's first lady, Dev Long Crawford, uh, of course, as always, as well as Phil DeYoung. Yes, he's here. I have no word on the sister, but uh, that's okay. We've got enough sweet ass as it is. And hey, don't you know it? I know we know it. I know it. That's right. Well, lots to do on the big show today, of course. But first, got to get the uh, some other promos and credits and, and, and bits and pieces out of the way, of course. Uh, in the boost today, pushing the buttons, making the show go, is indeed the one and only Kissy Springer, uh, now with even more... Uh, well, training, I guess we'll call it. Uh, she's she's doing, I don't know, hopefully better than yesterday. And uh, we're definitely going to work on that with her a little more. But she's there pushing the buttons. 
on that PreSonus 2442 digital broadcast mixer. And of course, if you are into audio, anything to do with audio, either digital or analog. Yes, if you're an old analog person, hey, no no fear. PreSonus has got you covered. Get on over to PreSonus.com. Check them out. Also, of course, this show is brought to you by the fine folks, Tim Hortons, New York City. And now with those eight fine locations in the city to serve all of your coffee and baked goods needs. That's right. Tim Hortons, always fresh. And uh, mm, I highly recommend the dark roast. That is the way to go. Well, moving on today, I uh, don't do the show alone. No, we've we've got my my invisible friends. Yes, uh, first coming to us from Mill Bay Studios in uh, beautiful Mill Bay, uh, British Columbia, Canada, very close to the birthplace of Aerosmith Rocks, if you will. Is the one, the only Louis Lawless, thirty-five time Academy Award nominated director, never won anything. Are you there today, sir? Yeah, we, we're five steps away from winning the Academy Award. Yeah, yeah, and we didn't. No, but that's fine because you're you're here now and. You know, your your films are out there. They're doing well, right? My film, Unrepented, did very well in Europe. Yeah, see? So it's not all bad, you know. it's you're, you're, Every day is a new learning experience, Louis. And I finally figured out how to edit. Now, you see? Right there. It's, it's a perfect example of you continuing to learn and expand and grow every day. Oh, can we cuss? Can I cuss as I always do on, on the show? Uh, I'm going to... I don't know. I, I've I've put three days of training now into Kissy. Uh, I I think she's got the button figured out, but I'm I'm not a hundred. About fucking time. Move on. Move on. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Okay. She missed that one. Well, that's okay. That's okay, Kissy. You just keep calling in those airstrikes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody misses one, and of course that gaspy little raspy uh, uh, weasel dwarf like laugh. <laughs> Of course, coming to us from uh, about eight blocks down the street from Studio 2 here in downtown Manhattan, of course, yes. is the one, the only, uh, Gilbert, Gilbert Gottfried. There, <laughs> there he is. Are you ready today, sir? Are you going to screw everything up? What the fuck? Well, I got to ask. Yeah. I'm ready. I'll remember you said that. <laughs> I will remember you said that. Okay, give us the intro. Come on. And this is, I f- that up. Yeah. See? <laughs> You, you know, you're, you're never going to get this right. Yes. It, it just is. Everything that could go wrong yeah. goes wrong. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yes, and, and it just, it's not happening. It's not. Oh, it's not awful, but but just not good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I, don't, I don't know. I, I think I'm going to stick with it's It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stick with that. Well, hey, welcome to the show, uh, of course, Gilbert and, yes. and Louis today. Uh, always great to have you here. That was a mistake on my part. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, got lots to cover today, but uh, first of all, yes. we're going to talk about going to war. Yes. <laughs> yes, I went to war. <laughs> I don't know. I did. I did. Well, yes. well, Gilbert, you you know a couple of yes. yeah. You sent uh, some emails and stuff a, a couple of well, I guess about five or six days ago. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I would know because I didn't get them. Yeah. Right. That's right. Well, of course, the the big hubbub today around the studio was, of course, that. Uh, well, we, we haven't had email for about a week and a half now. Yes. And, uh, of course, you know, me being me, you know, I, I figure, okay, well, you know, we, we get our email servers and everything through Google. Yes. And I'm like, okay, well, they, they just screwed something up and, you know, the, the Kate's and, and all the corporate addresses and everything are working. So I'm like, eh, yes. you know, they'll figure it out. It's, it's not that big a deal and it's certainly not me. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, no, it's not me. So, so I'm there. I am today. I'm like, well, you know, um, uh, what was it? Three, four days ago, I had actually put in a request with the the Google customer support services. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they said they get back to me within 24 hours. Yes. Yes. Uh, now three days plus later. <laughs> Yes, they finally called back, of course, yes. uh, a fine man by the name of Pepe. Yes. <laughs> yes, he, he called me back. And, of course, he, he wasn't quite the East Indian, you know, hello, thank you for calling Microsoft. How can I help you? Yes. <laughs> right. He wasn't, uh, he wasn't like that at all. He, he was more, well, to be honest, he, he sounded uh, Dominican. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... 
So he's on there with me, and 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 he proceeds to tell me. Yes. Okay. This this is great. This is great. He proceeds to tell me. Oh yes, Christopher. We we find we find your account. Yes, we find yes. it. No, I'm 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 overjoyed that you found it. Good good for you. <laughs> oh, that's that, that's such good news to me, Pepe. Thank, yes. Thank you. <laughs> You, you've, you've found my account. That is incredible. You know, in this day and age of 2015 and the technological advances with, you know, nano nanite technology, I'm, you found my email account. That's, <laughs> that's just great. Well, well, great. So, so then he says to me. Yes. He, he says to me, so, so what is the problem? How can I help you? Yes. Well, let's see. You you just told me that you found my account and that it's disabled. <laughs> yes, it seems it was suspended Google side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it's suspended Google side. So I'm like, oh, okay. Well, this ought to be good. Yes. You know, uh, what 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 am I uh, cavorting with terrorists or something? Yes. What a, <laughs> right. So so no, he proceeds to tell me that well. You know, several days ago, you went in and, and updated your Google profile. Yes. Uh, well, I was like, no. No, I didn't. Uh, why Why would I do that? I, I don't do anything with Google or Gmail or any of your goo-goo crap. I, I don't. No, no. <laughs> no, I don't do anything with Google Freaking anything. I, I said I, I set this up. I said the the host of our website at NewYorksBestTalk.com. Yes. They suggested we go through you for our email. Yes. Uh, I decided, geez, okay, ten bucks a month. I'll go for it. Let's yes. let's do it. I said uh, we we set them all up. They've been working great for a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. And, and and at no time in any of this yes. did did I go. To, to Google and update my freaking profile. I, I don't... If I have a, a Google profile, it's news to me. <laughs> okay. So I don't have a, a Google pro. He's telling me, oh, no, you updated it, and you said you were 13. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he said. He says this to me. Yes. <laughs> I, I said, excuse me? <laughs> Oh no! Well, you went into your, your 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 Google account and you changed all your information, and you said that you are thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm like, no, no, I didn't. But you, you being the great server admin for Google, you can go into those servers with your admin license, and get me the information of the mother effer who did. Yes. <laughs> right. Anyway, he says, long and the short is because you said you were 13 years old. People who are 13 years old can't have Google Listener. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you apparently can't have a Google account at, at 13 years old. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm like, well, great. Uh, I'm almost, uh, I'm 47 years old. I'm, 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 it's a radio station account. You can see this. I'm sure you can read. <laughs> Or at least, God, I'm hoping. <laughs> so, so you know, I'm on the phone with him for, yes. for like 45 minutes. Yes. And he's, he's, he's still quoting me the same shit he was quoting me 40 minutes earlier. Yes. <laughs> it's like the script doesn't change. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So so I'm like I'm okay, I'm 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 getting angry by this point yes. to be fair and and that's why we've put an explicit uh, warning on this show today because I I'm I, I do in the interview you're about to hear I I do go off and I wasn't about to go through and edit out all the beeps and I wasn't going to trust Kissy to beep all the beeps. Yes. <laughs> So I just figured, okay, screw it. You know what? I'm I'm just going to go ahead. We're we're just going to put it out there. We'll put explicit on the show. Uh, if the adults out there just can't deal with it, too bad. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so anyway, he finally puts me through to this supervisor lady. Yes. Oh yeah, she sounds like Charo. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sure. So she's on there, and I'm explaining all the same shit to her over yes. and over and over. I'm like, just, 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 you know, it's already been established. You guys disabled my account for some asshole reason. <laughs> you know, obviously, I'm on the phone with you right now. I, yes. I, I can give you our credit card number, but I'm, I'm really not going to because I'm not quite sure who the hell you are. Yes. <laughs> 
right? And she, she's telling me, well, you know, the only thing you can do is, is you know, send us a, a full-color copy of your ID. I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, she says, oh, send us full copy of your ID so that we can verify that you're 47. I said, I don't need to verify that I'm 47. I said, why the hell didn't you make the 13-year-old verify he was 13 before you shut me down? <laughs> Now, long and the short of it is, and we get down to where I've been on the phone with her now for about four or five minutes. Yes. And, uh, well, this is the the rest of the conversation uh, right here. So fasten your seatbelts. As Morgan Freeman said, it's going to get frickin' rough in here. (laughs) Here we go. In order to do that, we need to have an ID proving that your name, you are old enough 13 years. Once we have that information, then the security department will be able to uh, remove the suspension for your account, so you can go ahead and access, use the account, or delete it as how you want to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to send you an email. Which email uh, address how, can we use how to are send you, an email? How are you going to send me an email? That's, that's going to be a nice trick. How, how are you going to do that? I'm sorry? My email address is producer at New York's best talk dot com, a radio station in Manhattan. You shut down the email two weeks ago. How the fuck are you going to email me? Then you have a Gmail account, a personal account, your wife account, any other type of email? You 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 you, you want to send this through my wife's account. Any email that you can send me with a copy of your ID. Any email will be okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? You sound like you're from some third world country that's going to use my ID for what fucking purpose? What guarantee do I have that you even work for Google? Yeah. So they can send you an email through Google account? You can't send me an email. I can. Just give me an address. I'll send you an email. You're going to see that it's going to be from eSupport at Google.com. I think that that's Google, isn't it? That's a Google address. That means that I work for Google. You know so what? Can I, 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 no. so I can send you the email? No, you know, you know what? I've I've got a better idea, hon. We're just gonna not pay you. How about that? We'll just not fucking pay you. Yeah. You can keep the account <laughs> suspended for years if you want. You can well, you can sir, put it on your website. On hey, end. look, it's we suspended me, this guy. Account. We suspended this guy saying he's 13 fucking years old. Yes, this almost 50 year old man in a New York radio station. That's what we did. I completely understand. No, you don't. I'm not saying that you're 13. I'm saying that it's a system error. So just give us the help so we can help you out suspending the account. I would love to give you the help. I would love for you to, to, to send me that email, hon, and prove, awesome. prove that you're with Google. So let me know how an email address I can send you well, the email you know, through a Google it's account. It's kind of hard when the one that I fucking pay for from you people is shut down. Okay, can I have an alternative one? No, you can't. Why? So I can get fucking Google ads in some other spam accounts? So you can sell off (laughs) that fucking email address too? Really? I understand your frustration, understand you're mad. No, I don't think you do. I don't think you do. You do not understand because you do not have your own business. You are not in downtown freaking Manhattan in New York. You are most certainly not going on the air in a couple of hours with a bloody radio show. No, I don't (laughs) think so. Not the same. Well, let me tell you that before working here, I used to have a Google Apps account. I have my own business, my own account, and it happens the same to yes, me, so now, I know what that really looks like. Excellent. So you tell me what you'd do in this situation with them shutting you down for almost two weeks with no explanation, no notice, and certainly no bloody help when I finally decide, okay, geez, we've got to get something resolved here. I put in a request for help, and I don't get nothing for 72 hours. Then I get this man calling me up telling me that the reason I'm suspended is because I'm 13 years old. How, how would you react to that? I'm really interested to know. Of course, I'll be mad, but I'll be happy to assist. So, you, you'd I'm be happy to assist. Option. If well, I were you, I'll give out the information that I'm asking so I can be able to help. All right, hon. Well, why don't you send your ID to me? Yeah. Do you need it? <laughs> Are you the one that works for Google that needs to unlock my account? Absolutely not, but I sure know how to take your ID That's and right. misuse it. I sure know how to take your That's ID right. and sell it. 
No, yeah, I can send you an email to Google I'm, I'm, saying that I have an account from Google. I you support you, from know, Google. You I can know. search. That's Google support. And you can send me the information where we can send to the department, to the legacy department for them to remove the suspension. Or if it's okay with you and if it's what you want, I can give you the address. You can send the email to them. Oh, However, yeah, if it's yeah. not through a case, they won't be able to remove the, the suspension. I'm oh, doing no. my best to assist you. I just need no. your ID. So we can help you out. I need an email address where I can help you with. Yeah, yeah so do I. <laughs> so do I. It's it's kind of that Mexican standoff thing, isn't it? I, no, I'm I, not Mexican. I, I, I pay, no, I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> no, no, no. no the, the, a Mexican standoff. It's a saying when two sides are pretty much at odds and nobody's got the upper hand and it just kind of sits there and carries on forever you know here's the thing um i go out and i i buy email services from google because that's what everybody has to do now apparently if you get your website hosted anywhere they all want you to go to google so i go do that and i pay for those services for the radio station i pay for that and i get email services from from google because you know google's got servers and everything and and, and admins that actually you know suspend and unsuspend accounts so i feel pretty confident that you know when something screws up like this where you say i'm 13 years old and you disable the account i it, it's you know i understand but you know you'd also understand that you'd phone back up google and say hey you suspended my account Oh, that's because you're 13. Okay, well, I'm not 13, obviously. Unsuspend my account. Oh, we can't do that. You have to do that. <laughs> what do you mean I have to do that? I pay you to do that. Well, sir, unfortunately, I didn't say that you have to do that. I just said that I need an ID card so I can do it for you. All right, well... <clears throat> So can I have an email address where I can send you an email through Google so you can send me your ID so I can unlock your account? You know, over, yeah, I would have to say over 40 minutes ago, um, you know, I informed Pepe there, or the other guy, informed him that, you know, this is a radio station, this is a business, uh, we have uh, clients and guests and, and information coming in on the producer email account every single day. Uh, we've been without it now for like a week and a half, and... He really needs to get this rectified, and, and he, he made me angry, uh, you know, basically stating that the reason it shut down is because I said I was 13. <laughs> I, I have never said I was 13 on a computer or to anybody since I was 13. That's just not true. So I get this bogus story from him about how the account was suspended in the first place. And then I get these two bullshit options. Then I get, well, you can send us your ID and prove that you're 47, yeah. or you can... <laughs> You can give us 30 cents on your credit card and we'll cash it back because 13-year-olds don't have credit cards. Th those are great. But here's option three, I said to him. I said both of those options aren't acceptable, Pepe. Option three yeah. is I recorded this conversation, which I have for the last 56 minutes and 17 seconds, and I put this on the air at 5 o'clock today in New York City. That's what I'm going to do, Pepe. There's your option three. So unsuspend the account, Mr. Admin. That that was 40, 40 minutes ago I did that. And I, I keep getting the runaround with him. I keep getting the same fucking shit. You know, you people need to quit reading from the computer screen and actually address people's concerns and problems because the computer screen isn't going to help you. You understand that? Of course. Okay, so, so option three is we're going live at 5 p.m. Eastern in New York City with this recording. Of you and Pepe and this whole Google fucker. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. And we're going to talk all about that on the show today. And in addition to that, you keep that 10 bucks or whatever it is for these two email accounts for this month. You go ahead and keep that. Don't think you're ever fucking charging us a penny more ever again. <laughs> and we'll get our business for emails elsewhere. Thank you very, very fucking much for absolutely nothing. That's the that's the joy there. <laughs> oh yes, Google, Google, Google. Yes. <laughs> Google, Google. Well, there it is. That's the uh, that's the uh, very very corporate, very um, very professional manner in which they. Uh, <clears throat> 
in which they deal with, uh, you know, uh, legitimate complaints like, hey, idiots, I'm not frickin' 13. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, I actually thought, you know, I, I was actually thinking during that. Yeah, I was like, geez, you know, I, I could probably, uh, we, 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 another way that we could verify that I'm almost frickin' 50... <laughs> Is you know I I well, let let's play a little word game there, um, Charo. Let's uh, <laughs> let's play a little word game. Uh, how many English words do you know? Yes. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure that uh, for as many as that might be, twenty one. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I can uh, word you under the table. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, no, I, I, yeah, it just was a, a stupid, stupid waste of another hour. <laughs> and, uh, well, now I've had the chance to waste it all here with you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so I'll admit I was a little pissed when I, I you know, posted that I'm going to war with Google. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fine. Just f them. But 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 hey, you know what we can do, of course. Yes. Yes, is we can inform all the listeners that if you have email services with that great Google Gmail shit, <laughs> <laughs> well, you might want to stick a finger in its ass and move along. Yes. <laughs> yes. And speaking of that, I guess we probably should too. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I, I guess we should. I guess we should. Oh, geez, look at the time. God damn it, the weather's going to be late again. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, gang, don't go anywhere. We're going to go for that first commercial break now. Get out of the way. Kill ourselves a black man. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to go to Frankie the Retard, and uh, uh, we'll we'll talk more about this uh, weather girl situation coming up, because I, I want it resolved, and I want two weather girls. I, <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go for that break we'll be back into you've got it locked to hla radio one new york what if there was a coffee that was sourced from some of the world's most renowned growing regions abundant with rich fertile soil what if this coffee was picked at the perfect moment, then packed meticulously and shipped carefully to be roasted under the watchful eye of coffee masters? What if it was expertly blended, ground, and sealed, ensuring maximum flavor and freshness, then brewed in small batches and always served fresh within 20 minutes just the way you like it? Now, what if this coffee just happened to be the coffee you already know and love? Tim Hortons. Always fresh. Always great tasting coffee. Automatic freshness, softness, and static control has never been easier with the Bounce Dryer Bar. I just stick it to the inside of my dryer and I never have to remember. Oh, Old Spice Body Spray makes you smell like power! It's so powerful it sells itself in other people's commercials. You smell like outdoor freshness. You smell like power. Yeah, I do. Power! When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us. It was, it was beautiful. A broom closet. But the, but best the worst part, part was the, the shower. shower. My, My wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towels. Shower curtain. To find that whole vacation, vacation for, her. for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. White rum has a new captain. 
Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page, Mm -hmm. on Twitter, and on Instagram. That's right, and uh, we're not giving you the damn URLs because they're seven miles long. All, all you, all you got to do, all you got to do is just go and go to go to whatever is your favorite. Yes, you know, go to go to Twitter, go to Facebook. I mean, I don't care. Yes. <laughs> you just go there and you put in htlaradio one dot com or HTLA Radio One or New York's Best Talk yes. or Crash Jesus the Asshole. <laughs> you know. Just, just, just put it, uh, put it all in there, yes. and 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 gee, I don't know. What do you think you're gonna get back? Do you, do you, do you think you might get our our social pages? Maybe. Yes. I, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm I'm still a little uh, embittered by my experience at Google. <laughs> yes. They get f-ing crazy because all of a sudden nobody loves them. Uh, well, pretty soon nobody will love them, and then what? <laughs> yeah. It's just life, and I love doing it. I love doing these kind of stories anyway. Well, you know, me too, uh, except when I'm getting screwed over for 10 bucks on an email account, you know? (laughs) Well, hey, gang, welcome back to the show, of course, your coffee and cigarettes Thursday double-double. That's right, HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk with your Thursday show for this 30th of July 2015. That's right, 82 degrees, Central Park right now. Hot damn. That's not right, Kissy. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not right. You, that's no. She, she, see, she's saying that's right. I'm like, no, it's not 82. You idiot. Yes. <laughs> 82, huh? Yeah. Looks like, uh, yeah, yeah. 82 in sunny skies is what she's uh, feeding me through here on the old monitor. Yes. Uh, I actually just went and did an independent check, of course, because I have the technology. <laughs> Go do an independent check. Yeah, it's 76 degrees uh, in Central Park right now under severe lightning and thunder. <laughs> so so what we can glean from this is, of course, that Kissy Springer will not be HTLA's new weather girl. Yes. <laughs> no. No, that, that won't be happening ever. Uh, but apparently there is some debate going on right now uh, yes. in the uh, Spreaker.com live chat room. Of course, uh, th- there's apparently some sort of competition among a bunch of big-titted hotties. Um, <laughs> yes, we, we've got listener uh, uh, Leanne, who apparently uh, apparently Leanne is actually a meteorologist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at least that's what they're saying in here. And, well, you know, who the hell can tell? I'm not. I'm certainly not going to get her to send my ID in to verify it. <laughs> of course, we got the uh, very, very stacked. Yes. Uh, uh, Stacy Watts, uh, of course, that I, I think is is also vying for the job. I'm I'm not too bloody sure, but it, it's fun to watch all their pictures bounce up and down. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so who knows? Anything could happen, gang. Uh, yes. Stay tuned. Uh, it, it, it could be, it could be very, very good, or ultimately, well, like my luck, very, very bad. So. <clears throat> Well, now, moving on today, I do have to do a couple of more shout-outs, of course. Uh, Greg Howe, I believe, uh, yes. from uh, good old Ontario, Canada there. I, I believe he's listening to the show today, but but he's been a stealthy son of a bitch for a while now, you know? <laughs> no. No, he, he has. Ever since we did his birthday special. Yes. <laughs> you know, we, we uh, Greg Howe actually had the honor of, of co- being Coffee and Cigarettes' first birthday show, and, and ever since then, the, the fucker is just gone. I, you know. <laughs> He's, uh, well, he's not gone, of course. I mean, you know, he likes on the shows every day. Yes. You know, he, he, he shares them out, or it, if he doesn't, he should. <laughs> you know, so so we, we, we know he's still alive. That's, yes. 
That's really the uh, important thing, of course, because, uh, you know, to be a fan of HTLA, you really do need to be alive. Yeah. So we know he's alive, and uh, if he's if he's in here or on here or listening on one of the multi-million platforms, who knows, uh, he could be, but he's certainly not saying nothing. No. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so there you go, Greg Howe, uh, shout outs to you, you prick, say something, you know. <laughs> also want to do some shout outs again today to Mr. Peter Goodwin, yes, aka The News Guy, the former New Yorker who relocated to Iceland for a piece of tail. Yeah. Now, why you would give up this city for a woman, Yes. that's beyond me, because, you know, this city is so much deeper and juicier. <laughs> <laughs> well, at any rate, I don't know. Lady, ladies, uh, if you're out there listening to me, you, you, you have some weather credentials. You, you, you want to you know, come and do the damn weather for us. Uh, we're, we're all about it. But, of course, I can't give you uh, uh, to send your, your applications and topless photos to, <laughs> <laughs> to producer at NewYorksBestTalk.com for obvious reasons. There you go. <laughs> Uh, you could, however, actually send them to the CEO of HTLA. That should go over well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, send them over to corporate at uh, newyorksbesttalk.com. That's New York's with the S. It's New York's, like the city's own, you know, like, yes. right? <laughs> Well, that's another thing. It took me 38 minutes, I think, to get it through Google's effing head that it's New York's best talk and not New York best talk. <laughs> shit like really like like no 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 this isn't a, a dominican website trying to be an american website no 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 see see we're actual you know uh, well i'm not bred here but but i'm an irish immigrant damn it i'm just as american as the next american you know uh, it's it's it, it's it's plural as in the form. I had to go through the Wikipedia thing is what I had to do. But but really, I, I got to stop this now. We're we're heading on for six o'clock. I haven't even started the show yet. <laughs> <clears throat> so yes, but uh, any weather girls interested in replacing Frankie McDonald for the love of God, send send pictures, videos, uh, uh, sound bites, God, anything. Send send send. Something I can bludgeon the idiot with. I, I, <laughs> but anyway, before we get on to, geez, oh, I don't know, the first story of the day. Yes. <laughs> before we can do that, we have to, of course, bring you right after the first commercial break, of course, Brock Favors uh, in the HTLA's Chopper 1 with today's traffic. Brock, do something. Hello, everybody out there. This is Brock Favors with Traffic on the Ones, Chad Armstrong. Is out sick today, so I am filling in for my usual land reports, and uh, I'm up here at the chopper. But I gotta tell you guys, I am loving the view. <laughs> oh my god! Oh oh! Oh! oh. Woo. All right. <laughs> well, we are um uh we are over the ten. It is massively clogged down there like a pint of maple syrup on a cool November morning. And we do. Oh, s. Goddamn, we're gonna die in this motherfucker! Oh, s. Oh, my God! Woo! Woo! Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, I am, uh. I am very sorry, folks. Oh, yeah? <laughs> it's a little bit of a bumpy ride up here. We are now approaching the 405, and where the left lane is blocked by a mattress. So somebody is uh, going to be doing a little return to Ikea later today. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, please! Oh, goddamn! Oh, get me out of this motherfucking dust machine right now! Oh, no, black people ain't meant to be in the sky! We ain't meant to be in the sky, man! Oh, <laughs> Right now, ain't nobody going down this. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry, folks. I'm very sorry, brother. But I'm losing my shit up here. Actually, you have every right to. We're about to crash. Oh, me. oh 
once again, as always, of course, HTLA would like to offer its condolences to the Favors family. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. How many different families do you have? Uh, enough that if I died in that helicopter wreck, the condolences would be going out for several weeks. <laughs> yeah. They just would, and uh, you know that, that's geez. You know what do you what do you say about that? I mean, uh, I just I just well to be totally honest, I don't know what to say about that. I just you know. Um, thanks, Louis, for bringing it up. As always, it's it's absolutely always a, a joy and a surprise every time you do this every day. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, uh, I've got more than enough families. In fact, uh, well, let's just put it this way. I will never be ever in a million years, no matter how many women I leave with 50 kids. <laughs> I will never be out of a place to be on Christmas Eve. <laughs> Sex is only the tip of the iceberg. Well, it also makes for future Christmas Eves, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Now, unfortunately, uh, it, it's just come to my attention here that Greg Howe, uh, he's apparently lost. Yes. Uh, he's, he says, uh, you know, he doesn't know how to get in the chat room. That, that's total effing. He must work for Google because... <laughs> No, no, he must. He must, like, professionally lie for Google yes. because he, uh, he claims he doesn't know how to get in the chat room. Well, that's really funny because you're following us on Spreaker, and I can go back in the shows to all the chat logs. Every show, it keeps all the chat logs. Yes. I know exactly what day you stopped coming in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. So don't F with me, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so so Sharon Chesley, of course, uh, being the fine, upstanding Texas gal that she is. Yes. <laughs> uh, she's, of course, trying to assist the old fool from Canada. <laughs> to get into the chat room here just so he can see Stacy's titties. <laughs> that's, that's the... Uh, that's, that's the whole sum and, and the total of the story there. Yes. So. That was a mistake on my part. Oh, did you tell him about the titties? <laughs> no, I thought I did. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> well, we do have to move on to the show today, finally. Uh, oh, shit. No, we still haven't done the weather. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, uh, fine. Uh, here he is, uh, HTLA's uh, famed and, and beloved, <laughs> yes, beloved meteorologist, the one, the only. Giving you your weather from probably three years ago. <laughs> the one, the only, Frankie McDonald. This is Frankie McDonald, my own TV station, live in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Powerful storm is heading for Vancouver, British Columbia on Saturday, <laughs> September 28th, 2013. 13. It's going to be a period of real heavy rain and a strong winds along the coast of British Columbia. It's going to hit Vancouver, British Columbia especially in greater Vancouver area because of the intense low pressure system it's going to be in west of British Columbia it's going to bring a lot of rain in greater Vancouver area and Vancouver Island the Sunshine Coast and the western coast of British Columbia it's going to bring up to 50 plus millimeters of rain in greater Vancouver and the Vancouver Island people in Vancouver be prepared have your rubber boots ready, have your ankles ready, have your ankles ready, because a lot of rain's heading for Vancouver on Saturday. It's going to affect Fraser Valley as well, such as Abbotsford, Chilliwack, and Hope, and Greater Vancouver's getting a lot of rain. And the west coast of British Columbia as well. It's going to be a big wave, son of Shore <laughs> and the beaches and a lot of Vancouver Island and the Sunshine Coast. What about the Stay away pizza? from the beaches. The pizza. Don't <laughs> go near the shore because a lot of rain is heading for Vancouver and the very strong winds. And the winds going to gust up to over 100 kilometers per hour, especially in a lot of the coast of British Columbia. It's like Vancouver Island in Greater Vancouver. <laughs> and 
people take over. Don't open up your umbrella. Pepsi. Or your umbrella can get broken because winds will be too strong to support an umbrella. It's going to be periods of heavy rain in Greater Vancouver and Vancouver Island. And winds are going to be very strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In Vancouver, British Columbia. Yeah, we got that. <laughs> Victoria, British Columbia as well. Because a lot of rain's heading for Vancouver. And the winds are going to be very strong. A lot of the coast of British Columbia. You are retarded, right? Especially people living in the... No, no, I just want to know. Coast <laughs> of Vancouver Island as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we know. Are, are you retarded? Be that is <laughs> big waves hitting along the coast. The power wheel broke. Have your flashlights ready. ready. Yeah. Have yeah. your extra batteries ready. Have your crank up radio ready. For what? Have your candles ready <laughs> just in case the power goes out. Yeah. Have your cell phones charged. Have your iPads charged. Have your iPods charged. Oh. Have your Christ. tablets yes. charged. <laughs> order your pizzas and order your Chinese food. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Order your because it's going to yeah. be very stormy conditions from Saturday, September the 28th. 2013 until the next day. Monday, September 30th, 2013, in Greater Vancouver, British Columbia. Mm -hmm. It's going to get a powerful storm. Mm. Best of luck to you people in Vancouver. Yeah. Be prepared for a lot of rain. And don't drive your car to the flood or your car can get stalled. Oh, no. <laughs> when you go for a walk, wear your rain gear, avoid the umbrellas. And avoid the puddles when you're driving a car. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Puddles will fuck Don't you. walk in the puddles <laughs> in Greater Vancouver area. Best luck to you. People in Greater Vancouver, be prepared for a lot of rain. Take care. Are, are you? Is that it? You're, you're finished now? <laughs> wow. You know, I, I'd say something about him and Vancouver and puddles, but... Yes. <laughs> Please, please, out there, anywhere, any, any whatsoever, big titted weather girls, any anywhere, <laughs> really? <laughs> Come on, God, all. I, I, yeah. Am I asking too much? Well, Is it not awful, but but just not good? Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, you, not awful, huh? Well, why don't you have them on your show? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see the idiot over there on the uh, Gilbert Gottfried's Amazing Colossal podcast, jerk. Yes. <laughs> no. No. No, I don't. Because I asked him, I said, well, fly out here and I'll film you. Yeah, Gilbert won't come to you for nothing. <laughs> nothing. Uh, well, hey, you know what? Uh, somebody did learn something today, and, and no, it wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but but I, I, I am pleased to announce that, that Greg Howe has once again rejoined us in the live chat room. <laughs> You see, there you go. That just goes to, to prove it. Never underestimate any Canadian when there's nice big titties at hand. Yes. <laughs> see? That, 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 they make things happen when there's titties involved. Yes. In fact, you could have, in World War II, you know, they, yes. they could have just sent over like six Canadians, a uh, bunch of two fours, and uh, just told them that there was big titted girls in France. Go get them. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, there we go. Uh, I, th I think if we f fulfilled all our obligations to every asshole on the planet yet, yes. <laughs> have we done that? Have we done? That? I think. I think we've done that. I think I can get on with the absolute very first story of the show today. <laughs> I, I think I can do that. <laughs> Finally. Uh, it's about fucking time. Move on. Move on. Thanks, Kissy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think she's just doing that now to play with me. Yes. Yeah. I think she's just pissing it around and. I don't care. Fine. First story. Okay, here we go. 
Well, we told you yesterday, of course, about the Malaysian uh, airline and the missing plane and all that stuff from over a year ago. Yes. And, uh, well, they think they might have found a, a wingtip. Well, yes, the, the wingtips indeed did find a wingtip. <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> yes, they did. Malaysia's deputy transport minister today said it's almost certain now the aircraft debris found off the coast of the Indian Ocean island of Reunion came from a Boeing 777 aircraft. And when you consider that there are no others missing or downed, we're pretty sure this is the play. <laughs> Abdul Aziz Kaprawi told reporters that the country's chief investigator told him the, quote, flapperon, part of a plane's wing, is almost certainly the same model of aircraft as Malaysia Airlines Flight 370. People cleaning the beach on Reunion found the six-foot-long par partly part part yeah they found it on wednesday <laughs> and confirmed that the debris was indeed from an mh370 the plane disappeared on march 8th 2014 after taking off from kuala lumpur malaysia en route to beijing with 239 people aboard the same cleaning crew on thursday yes today found a suitcase with wheels near the same spot the local newspaper le journal la reunion reports <laughs> Yes, the newspaper published a photo of the suitcase and quoted Johnny Begg, a member of the cleaning crew, as saying the piece of luggage was there on Wednesday, but no one really paid attention. Oh, yeah, because we're just sifting through airplane records. Why would we take note of a suitcase? <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah, nobody paid attention. We'll see the closure of the bag is still attached to a piece of rigid canvas and somebody's hand. <laughs> I guess that was carry-on. Yes. <laughs> well, as for the wing section, Malaysian Prime Minister Nijab Razak told, said it was too early to speculate whether it's from MH370. No, it's not, you idiot. We're not missing any other 777s. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, see, even morons in the in the live chat room are like, uh, don't airplane parts have serial numbers? <laughs> yeah. Well, of, of course they do. Yes. And, uh, yeah, they've got them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, but geez, no, we, we, we can't. We have to maintain the suspension of disbelief on this news story for at least another week for the ratings. <laughs> 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 well, the debris w will be shipped by French authorities to Tutulos for examination. He said in a statement, the Malaysian team is en route to the southern French city, while well, a second team is traveling to Reunion, he said. Reunion is a French territory. And with a stupid name like Reunion, of course it is. <laughs> well, the location is consistent with the drift analysis provided to the Malaysian investigation team, which showed a route from su the southern Indian Ocean to Africa. He added, as soon as we have more information or any verification, we will, of course, make it public. We don't want to drag this story on for a week. <laughs> We have had many false alarms before. No, you haven't. <laughs> no, no, actually, ding fag. You've had absolutely no indication of anything for over a year. That's why this story is a mystery. <laughs> but I'll digress. The location is, of course, consistent with that drift analysis. As soon as we have more information or a verification, like, you know, uh, the serial number on the wing... <laughs> We will make it public. We have had many false alarms, but for the sake of the families who have lost loved ones and suffered such heartbreaking uncertainty, I pray we will find out the truth so that they may have closure and peace. Wow, man, you guys sure know how to write the fluff. <laughs> Well, Australian Deputy Prime Minister Warren Truss today described the discovery as a major lead in the search for the Boeing 777. Yes, this is absolutely a very significant development. Truss told reporters at a news conference it's the first real evidence that there is a possibility that part of the aircraft may have been found. See? See, that, that, that that's the first right there. He just said it. Yes. It's the first uh, possible piece that has been put. So, so where in the last year, uh, you other monkeys, wh wh where, where is other possible wreckage? Where, where is that? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, he added that it's too early to make any judgments, but clearly we're treating this as a major lead. Truss, who was has overseen the search for the Boeing 777 in the ocean a thousand miles west of Perth, said it would take some time to come to a conclusion. I can't think. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because, you know, logic doesn't, you know, no. Yes. Well, well. <laughs> Well, the number BB670, which he said is not a serial or registr- registration number, could possibly be a maintenance number found in the debris, and it may help with identification. Really? You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you, you think that might be written down in a, in a log somewhere, maybe? Yes. Oh. <laughs> uh, do, do, do you think maybe we might try the airport that the fucker took off from, maybe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, there's a good idea. Yes. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but it could take us up to a week. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Australian researchers are examining photographs to see if the barnacles on the record wreckage reflect the amount of time the missing plane would have been in the water, he said. Well, why go to all that scientific and expensive analysis? Just check the logs at the airport it left. <laughs> Well, clearly, if this wreckage is from the MH370, it is an important breakthrough, particularly for the families, he added. Speaking to the BBC by phone, Jaquita Gonzalez, wife of Patrick Francis Gomez. Oh, I wonder if Mr. Gonzalez knows about that. (laughs) (laughs) An in-flight supervisor on the missing plane said, A part of me hopes that it is MH370 so that I could have some closure and bury my husband properly. But the other part of me says, no, 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 because there is still hope. And I guess a third part of her got remarried within a year. (laughs) You know, because his name is Gomez. Yes. And her name is Gonzalez. Yes. That's, uh, yeah, that's that's really nice. Uh, F your husband. Well, moving on today, of course, we're uh, going to tell you about uh, the the bond today that has been set yes. for that Ohio no not cop you jack wagon security guard. <laughs> yes, the uh, university security officer, of course, who uh, is was accused or is accused of killing uh, that driver that we mentioned yesterday on the big show. Yes. Well, in Cincinnati today, a former University of Cincinnati police officer charged with murder in the shooting, a death of a man he pulled over for a missing front license plate, pleaded not guilty in court today. Uh, Not guilty. Not guilty. Uh, How do you plead that when the video has you in it? Not not only not only does the video have you in it, yes. it it has the you in the video shooting to death the guy in question. Yes. How do you? <laughs> oh, I'm I'm not guilty uh, by reason of of yeah, run away. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> well, as we reported to you yesterday, Ray Tensing, 25, killed Samuel Dubois, 43, on July 19th as the unarmed black man. <laughs> Yes, delayed in producing his driver's license during the traffic stop near the university campus, Judge Megan Shanahan of Hamilton County Common Police Court set Tensing's bond at $1 million during an arraignment today. Tensing bowed his head, closed his eyes, and never looked at anyone. Well, if he's not guilty, why not? (laughs) You know. Well, applause broke out in the courtroom when Shanahan set that high of a bond, but the judge immediately put a stop to it, admonishing spectators. This is a courtroom, she said. Well, okay, we can clap here. This is a radio show, he said. <laughs> hey, all right. Yes, that's what I'm talking about right there. Fry the little some bitch. Yes. <laughs> Well, outside the courtroom, Dubois' family and friends demanded a conviction. They hugged and they shed tears. If the man doesn't get convicted, they can shoot me in the head, too, says Kimberly Thomas, Dubois' friend. To which the police force said, no problem, we'll see you after the trial. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for a few seconds, they broke into a chant of, no justice, no peace. 
But fearing more sales of shoes on eBay, the court uh, police quickly ordered them to be quiet. <laughs> Well, Dubois was the 637th person killed in the United States by police since January 1st, according to the Guardian database. 637th uh, person, actually, 398 of them were black. And, uh, yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay, I guess that is kind of high. Yeah. <laughs> 19 of those deaths were in Ohio. The British newspaper has been gathering data from news reports and social media to count deaths caused by law enforcement officers. Yeah, that's, that's you know, at HTLA here, that's what we like to do, too. You yes. know, we, we, we don't actually research sources. We, we go to things like Twitter and shit to, to, to count statistics. That's what we do. <laughs> Well, since Du Bois' uh, Dubois, uh, July 19th death, 27 officers have died at the hands of police. Yeah, not officers. Others. <laughs> let's try, try, try the word others. Let's, yes. let's do that. Let's, let's, God damn it, let's get real. <laughs> well, more than a quarter of the 2015 total so far were black. About 13% of the U.S. population identifies as black. Tensing's uh, personnel file from nearly four years on the Gren Hills Police Force his job there being hired in April of 2014 at the University of Cincinnati shows that he used a taser on a motorist during a January 2012 traffic stop. According to the documents, the inquirer obtained through public records requests. The officer claimed that the driver who was not identified was resisting arrest. Yes, firmly strapped in his seatbelt in his car. <laughs> Uh, officer had suspected the side of the car, according to the statement from another driver who witnessed the 2012 incident. Suspect started hitting officer and trying to get away. I stopped to help officer and grabbed the suspect's leg. Suspect continued to fight. Officer told him to stop or he would get tased. Suspect continued to fight, so officer tased him and electrocuted me because I was holding his leg. <laughs> well, Tensing reported that he received bruising and cuts to his right and index middle fingers. Oh, that's, yes, there you go. There, That's why he shot him, Your Honor. <laughs> oh, Tensing has been a police officer for a little more than four years, joining the Green Hills Police Force part-time in April 2011, a job that became full-time in March 2013, and continued part-time for eight months after the University of Cincinnati hired him in Green Hills, uh, nine in ten residents there are white. On Wednesday, Tensing was charged with murder after the Hamilton County Grand Jury indicted him earlier in the week in the Dubois, in the Dubois case. Uh, among the crucial pieces of evidence was a body camera video that contradicted the account of the incident that Tensing gave to, that Tensing sorry gave to investigators. That day, the Hamilton County prosecutor Joe Dieter said that he believed Tensing's shooting of Dubois was purposefully carried out. This is the most asinine uh, act I've ever seen a police officer make, Dieter says. I was, it was senseless. It was horrible. Tensing's lawyer, Stuart Matthews, said that it would do, he would do his best to raise money to get his client out of jail. Uh, Tensing can post 10% of the $1 million bond, an amount that can be raised through a lien on the house. Tensing's father, Paul Tensing, and other family members were in the courtroom during the arraignment, but no one would comment after the hearing. Paul Tensing is a retired uh, Springfield Township, Ohio fighter, firefighter, and in his career saved many, many black people. <laughs> well, Matthews repeated his stance afterward that Ray Tensing, who had reached through Dubois' lowered car window during a traffic stop, feared for his life when the officer felt Dubois was starting to drive away. Dieter said the car started to roll and the officer shot Dubois in the head, instantly killing him. There are two sides to things, Matthew said. This case will be tried in a courtroom. The Dubois family lawyer, Marco Mara, said that no bond should have been set at all. This was a murder without justification, says O'Mara, who represents George Zimmerman, of course, in the 2012 Trayvon Martin shooting in Sanford, Florida. Tensing was in a position of authority and should be held to a higher standard. Really? He got the same lawyer as Zimmerman. Wow, is that an admission of guilt, huh? <laughs> Well, Dubois' death raise, raises questions, of course, about the training of University of Cincinnati police officers who have an agreement with the city allowing them to patrol off the campus of more than 40,000 students rioting after Cincinnati police officers killed Timothy Thomas in 2001 resulted in a variety of changes to the force, including 
additional training and more detailed communication with dispatchers. It is unclear whether University of Cincinnati police also benefited. On Wednesday, the University of Cincinnati officials dismissed Tensing from their police force. Tensing, whose lawyer told Shanahan that he was a 2012 cum laude graduate of the university, turned himself in soon after the Dieter's news conference and spent the night in Hamilton County Jail. Well, good for you. <laughs> Good for you. That, that's that's that's. I mean, that's so nice. Yes. You know, he turned himself in. What a yes. What a guy. <laughs> well, moving along today, uh, we've got uh, new Jimmy Hoffa details. Oh yes, and some of our listeners aren't fifty years old. So who the hell is Jimmy Hoffa? <laughs> right. <laughs> well, the disappearance of mobster Jimmy Hoffa is, of course, still a mystery that endures. That's right. Forty years later, absolutely stunning. That's right. Detroit, on this day, 40 years ago, a former Teamsters president, Jimmy Hoffa, called his wife, Josephine, from a payphone in Bloomfield Township to say that he had been stood up at an afternoon meeting with two mobsters. And then he vanished. <laughs> that, that's why I never go and meet with mobsters. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know. You just don't want to do that because then, of course, you turn up not turning up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, Jimmy Hoffa was never seen in public again, and his disappearance has become one of the most enduring mysteries of the 20th century, earning a place in pop culture through references in movies, music, books, even video games. As recently as a 2013, a credible tip was uh, enough to prompt the FBI to dig... But as the Hoffa mystery officially enters the Middle Ages, uh, the hopes of ever changing anyone with his crime have faded. Or charging anyone with his crime. That'd be good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, they're all dead, says Hoffa's daughter, Barbara Crancer, a retired judge in St. Louis. Most of the people that were suspects are gone. I guess it won't be solved. It would be a comfort to find his body, but I don't think we will. Crancer said she doesn't plan to mark the anniversary because she thinks of her father every day. It's sad. It's a sad time for us, she says. If you ever have anyone in your family who was taken away from you by force, you know what a gap that leaves in your heart. You miss them so much. I guess they don't know my daughter, Gia. <laughs> <laughs> well, most investigators are also convinced that no one will ever be charged with Hoffa's death. Almost everybody who is involved has gone to meet their maker, says Keith Corbett, a longtime prosecutor, who spent 25 years with organized crime strike force, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Detroit. The list of people who have reliable information is really short, he says. You could probably count on them on one hand with a couple of fingers left over. I think it's extremely unlikely that there will be any new developments in the case. Well, that's great. Why are we talking about it? <laughs> well, <you know. laughs> Well, the closest investigators ever came to recovering a corpse was a single strand of hair, three inches long, found in a car that may have driven Hoffa to his death. DNA testing, which didn't exist until ten years after he disappeared, eventually confirmed it was his. But the Mafia members and their associates suspected of arranging the hit on Hoffa have mostly died. Some violently, others as old men in their beds. Detroit's current U.S. attorney, Barbara McQuaid, declined to comment on the case, other than to say... The case is inactive, but not closed. So what really happened that Wednesday afternoon in 1975? Well, everyone has a theory. The main one presented to a grand jury was that the mafia killed Hoffa to prevent him from disclosing mob infiltration of the Teamsters, including its tapping into the union's pension fund to finance its rackets. Hoffa had resigned the Teamsters' presidency after going to prison on charges of jury tampering. Uh, conspiracy and fraud. In 1965, a federal jury in Chattanooga, Tennessee, convicted Hoffa of conspiring to accept illegal payments from a trucking company and later of trying to funnel a $10,000 bribe to the son of one of the jurors. But after President Nixon commuted his sentence, Hoffa was out of prison and angling to return to power. By that time, the mob had, had formed a relationship with Hoffa's successor, Frank Fitzsimmons, and didn't want Hoffa to return to jeopardize that. And it goes on for another 20 paragraphs, all about this murky shit from 65. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It's just not that goddamned interesting. Yes. <laughs> it's just not. Who? yeah, so what? Some scumbag gets off by some more scumbags. And, uh, 
Whatever. Well, hey, listen, we're going to go for a second commercial break, but don't you go anywhere because, man, when we come back, have I got the story of the century. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I, it's not even funny. I do. Rapper Chief Keef. <laughs> yes, he's got some new plans, but no venue whatsoever for his hologram show. <laughs> Yes, yeah, a hologram show for a rapper. All that and more when we're back into. We're New York's best talk radio, HTLA Radio 1. Good morning. Welcome to Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where fresh always tastes better. What can I make you this morning? How about our new flatbread breakfast paninis? Made fresh, just for you, with your favorite breakfast ingredients on maple or multigrain flatbread. Then grilled to hot, melted perfection. Just $2.99. Who couldn't warm up to that? Tim Horton's Cafe and Bake Shop, where quality really does meet value. When we arrived at our hotel in New York, the porter was so incredibly careful, careless with our bags. And the room they gave us, it was was beautiful. A broom closet. But the the worst part was the shower. My My wife wife drying herself with the Egyptian cotton towels. Shower curtain. Defined that whole vacation vacation for her. Don't just visit New York. Visit TripAdvisor New York. With millions of reviews, a visit to TripAdvisor makes any destination better. Let's do a brand new day. Let's step away from the bland and let the color fly. Let's get to the one store with more number one choices and match this or this without using too much of this. Then, let's crack open a can and get to it. Paint? No. Let's do POW. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Glidden Duo starts at a new lower price of $25.46 a gallon. White Rum has a new captain. Introducing the all-new Captain Morgan White Rum. Five times distilled for a smoother taste. You've got it locked to HTLA Radio 1, New York. Take me to your heart. Show me where to start. Let me play the part of Love your first love. There we go. All the stars are right. <laughs> Let us make a wish tonight, my love. Oh, God. You know, if you ever sang to your wife like that, she'd leave you. <laughs> I nearly got kicked out of the theater. I, I can't remember what I yeah. thought about two weeks ago because I was booing and screaming. Yes, Louis, you're insane. We already knew that. Welcome back. Yeah. Yes, welcome back. He well, needs love, Chris. Come on. Well, I know. You gotta- you got you to gotta dispense more love from yourself. All these people are, are hurting here. Well, uh, with some of the gals I got in the chat room today, I'm, I'm pretty much ready to dispense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're still pretty good in there. My yeah. film, Unrepented, did very well in Europe. Yes. Yes, we know that. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I read the reviews. It was uh, seven years ago almost now. Yeah. <laughs> that was a mistake on my part. Well, it, it may have been, Louis, but that, that's fine. You know, you, you're the bottom line is you're here and you're enjoying yourself. The music yeah. is fantastic. Oh, you got to hear it. No, we can. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we get it, too, you know. It's it's not just you. Uh, it's <clears throat> you know why, Chris? Because you're such a, a control freak. You don't want anyone to tell you what to do. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> Probably true, but hey, welcome back to the big show, of course, Coffee and Cigarettes, HTLA Radio 1, New York's best talk, and uh, of course, if you were here at 4.30, you would have heard uh, New York's best rock, yes, Aerosmith rocks, yes, they do, you want to go and check them out, I gave you the links, I'm not saying it again. <laughs> <laughs> ah, and speaking of links, Gilbert, I guess that's your cue. Don't forget to follow us 
us on our Facebook page, yeah. on Twitter, yeah. and on Instagram. Yeah. Just go to any one of those three and put in HTLA. You'll be all over us. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Easy as pie. And, well, you know, and the funny thing is, you know, the the, the higher ups here at the station, yes. they're, they're always on me. You know, you got to ch- change out the, the check it, uh, put out, put it fucking. Put it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. You, you, you got to put out the social media links, Crash. Yes. You, you got to do that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, yeah, okay. Give me something that won't take a whole segment to, to spell and type out for them all. How about that? <laughs> so, yeah, the easiest way we figured that out was that uh, Gilbert, uh, yes. he would just rattle off, you know, social media. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on, 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 on Troll Twitter. <laughs> you know. And 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 what was it? Instagram too. Yes. Yeah. Do do that, and then uh, you know you'll you'll find us. We'll we'll rely on the the HTLA listeners' common sense to find us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I like that, and then we don't have to worry about it. Now here's a story I'm sure you're tired of talking about, but I'd be remiss in not bringing it up, and that's when you beat up a transvestite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, again, I, I think for the fifteenth time, Gilbert. Yes. It, it was not a transvestite. It was Caitlyn Jenner. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, the difference there. You know, transvestite. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and transsexual. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that that's that's where they actually you know cut the 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 the, the they actually take the knives and and cut the penis. On, oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. See what you made me do. <laughs> Well, anyway, uh, welcome back to the show, folks. Your Thursday double double on HTLA Radio One, New York's best talk, of course. And uh, yeah, moving on today, we've got the uh, rapper Chief Keef. <laughs> yeah, what, what what is wrong? Can these fuckers not come up with a better name? <laughs> really? <laughs> I just. Oh my God, he's becoming black. I like it. Do a little <laughs> rap here too. <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> uh, no, it's not going to happen. But yes, the news out today. Yes, big news for all you Chief Keef idiots. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. The rapper Chief Keef isn't giving up on his quest to perform via hologram, even as he continues to struggle to find a venue willing to host him at all. <laughs> Well, he's a 19-year-old rapper with apparently a huge fan base of absolute gutter morons. <laughs> and, of course, uh, trying to, uh, I guess, further his, his, I don't know, what do you call them, musical talents? Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got this, this long history with the law. <laughs> yeah. Why couldn't he have been one of the unarmed blacks shot and killed? Why? You know? Well, his rap sheet... Oh, get that? I did a funny there. (laughs) Yes, his rap sheet has kept him from performing in Chicago, so he's now seeking to appear in a stage using a hologram technology that would allow him to appear simultaneously in Los Angeles and New York and his hometown of Chicago, according to Owen Owen Phillips, a spokesman with Hologram USA, the company that partnered uh, to put on the shows with, uh, well, Madonna, not him. (laughs) Yes, the announcement comes after officials in Chicago and Hammond, Indiana, thwarted Keefe's plan to perform in those cities by hologram. See, you know, if if it's it's one thing if you can't perform in person because uh, you suck that bad. Yes. If they won't let a reasonable see-through facsimile of you perform, just give up. <laughs> Now, earlier this month, Mayor Rahm Emanuel foiled the rapper's plans to play from a soundstage in Beverly Hills but appear at Chicago's Red Moon Theater by hologram when he persuaded the venue to cancel Keefe's show. You know, when the former presidential speaker dude, <laughs> you know, when, when, when he's killing your shows, just give up. <laughs> You know, this isn't one of those cases where, you know, you see a little inspirational post that one of your friends puts on Facebook. Oh, never give up. You can do it. Yes. (laughs) No, no. No, this is just give the F up. Cut it out. (laughs) 
There you go. Uh, the story does go on for several more paragraphs, but I'm not effing doing it. <laughs> I'm just not doing it. About, about fucking time. Move on. Move on. Uh huh. Yeah. Thanks, Louie. <laughs> Well, we told you about that uh, lion uh, murder, yes, basically, the, the, the killing of Cecil the lion in Zimbabwe, uh, well, it was a couple of days ago. Yes. <clears throat> well, shit's going south for the dentist. <laughs> yeah. That's right. In Herrera, Zimbabwe, a, a global outcry over the killing of iconic Cecil the lion has already caused a drop in tourism in Zimbabwe, officials said today. Our tourism sector, which was booming, has recorded a significant drop in arrivals since the Hwange National Park, where Cecil was being kept. Zimbabwe Tourism Authority Chief Kariunga Kaseski. <laughs> Kariunga Kaseski said today, without giving exact figures, the culprits have painted Zimbabwe with a dirty brush. <laughs> Yes, we're now seen as people who do not promote and protect animal rights, he says. Kasiki said he was launching an investigation to make sure other illegal hunting wasn't occurring in the nation's parks. We're all trying to put in some measures to ensure that critical tourist attractions are not tampered with, like what happened to Cecil, he said. Emmanuel Fundira, president of the Safari Operations Association of Zimbabwe, said that well, foreign tourists in Zimbabwe were forecast to spend around $5 million in the final quarter of 2015, critical revenue for an impoverished country. Many internal tour or international tourists were set to visit the country to see Cecil. Well, they've canceled their trips, fund trips, Fundira said. This killing is a huge loss to our tourism sector. Well, you know what? Bill the frickin' dentist. <laughs> And that's right, that dentist, Mr. Palmer, 55, a Minnesota dentist who killed 13-year-old Cecil uh, a month this month near the Hwangi National Park Reserve on the Botswana border after paying two local guides at least $50,000 U.S. to track and kill the big cat, according to the Zimbabwe Conservation Task Force. Palmer said he was relying on his guides to make sure he was hunting legally. Zimbabwean prosecutors acclaim Palmer and the guides lured Cecil out of the national park with bait shot him with a crossbow, tracked the wounded animal for over 40 hours, and then finally shoot, shot him dead. The two guides appeared in court Wednesday on allegations they helped Palmer kill the lion. One man was released on bail. The other one was released without charges. Zimbabwean Prosecutor General Johannes Tamana said that it would be difficult to force Palmer to return to the country for trial. Well, I know one person that could make him return to the country for trial. Yes. Yes. President Obama, do your effing job. <laughs> We don't have an extradition treaty with Washington, and the chances of bringing Palmer to give evidence or appear on the dock are next to nothing, Tamana said. Our prosecutors have not made any decision to press charges against Palmer, but said that they will wait until further tri uh, the other trial begins. Lewis Miller, chairman of the private Zimbabwe Professional Hunters and Guides Association, says that his organization suspended the two guides. Cecil was part of a research program run by the funded uh, and, uh, run and funded by the Oxford University in Britain, and wore a tracking collar uh, so other conservationists could study the lion's longevity and personality characteristics. Well, here's some news for you, Oxford. When you put a bullet in him, he doesn't survive long. <laughs> Well, Ferrari Gambiza, 45, a Herrera resident, canceled his October trip to Hwangi National Park with his wife and children. We have no reason to go there anymore because Cecil is dead, Gambiza said. We want the government to make sure that they will bring Palmer to Zimbabwe so that he faces some form of justice. You know, and, and I'm, I was just, I'm taken back to that Obama visit recently to Africa. Yes. And I'm thinking, you know, they, they had a long list of things that they wanted from him. Yes. And, of course, he, he gave them nothing. <laughs> Uh, in this particular case, don't you think it would be, oh, I don't know, a, a good thing to do uh, yes. for, for you know, the, the president who does nothing. <laughs> yes, the, the president who does nothing. Wouldn't it be nice if he would just, you know, have this guy arrested, yes. have this guy deported back to Zimbabwe so that they can cut him up in little pieces and fling him around for the lions? Yes. <laughs> You know, I think that's that's the right thing to do. And, and to be honest, I think it's the American thing to do, Mr. President. Yeah. 
Well, Patricia Musheski, 47, a local government counselor near Hwangi, said Cecil was beloved among Zimbabweans. Cecil was a rare breed of lion, she says. Unlike any other lions that we know to be dangerous, Cecil was very friendly. Conservationists fear that Cecil's death could lead to deaths of other lions in his pride. The saddest part of all is now that Cecil is dead, the next lion in the hierarchy, Jericho, will most likely kill all Cecil's cubs so that he can introduce his bloodline into the females says the Zimbabwe Conservation Task Force Chairman Johnny Rodriguez. This is the standard procedure for lions. Lions are among the most popular animals for visitors, so the loss of so many would be a crippling blow, says Ben Tisa, a tour operator based in the Victorian Falls, Zimbabwe. We need laws to stop the explore, exportation of trophies to the West, to stop such barbaric and wanton killing of our animals, he said. Of course, they've been saying that for over 100 years. <laughs> well, Cecil didn't die as a normal trophy animal. He said this animal is going to be a legend. He's going to change the attitudes of the peoples of the world. Stay tuned for the Disney film. <laughs> And moving on today, uh, we got a story about a white dad. Yes. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, normally this is a, a crime completely reserved for black parents. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's it's not funny. It it, it actually is. Yes. It's uh, uh, well, I'll just give it to you straight. It's it's a dad in custody after the baby's decomposed body was found. <laughs> yeah. Story comes to us from WKYC TV Cleveland in Medina, Ohio. A father who was arrested after his baby daughter was found badly decomposed appeared in court today, where the judge set bond at one million dollars. Well, seems to be a popular number today. <laughs> a cable worker found the baby's body inside a crib at an apartment complex in Medina, Ohio, on Wednesday. Eric Warfell of Medina is accused of putting trash in the child's room to disguise the smell of his daughter's decomposing body. It is believed the baby died on or about June 18th, about six weeks ago. The child to whom police believe was Ember Warfell would have been two years old in October. The baby's body has been sent to the Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner's Office for an autopsy to determine cause of death. Warfell, 34, was arrested yesterday. Another daughter who was seven years old was with him at the time of his arrest. She is now with her grandparents. Warfell is charged with abuse to a corpse. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently that's a fifth degree felony. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Police say that additional charges are expected. According to the Medina Gazette, a cable company had been upgrading its systems in the Forest Meadows unit but could not get cooperation to enter Warfell's unit, said Medina Police Chief Patrick Barducci. A release was obtained to allow the cable employee to enter the unit, which was how the child's body was found. In court Thursday, Warfell said his ex-wife lives in New York. It was revealed in court that Warfell is staying at the Motel 6 prior to the discovery of the child's body. Yeah, because he don't want to smell that. <laughs> well, a po post, of course, on Warfell's Facebook page from April 3, 2013, indicates that he also had a five-month-old daughter who died in March. The child, identified as Aaron Delin Warfell, died from a sudden, unexplained infant death with manner undetermined, according to the Cuyahoga, uh, Cuyahoga sorry, County Medical Examiner's Office. So he's, he's just chain-killing. <laughs> just... <laughs> Strap him up and knock him down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Moving along today, Americans have new hopes to reclaim property seized by Cuba. <laughs> Yes, apparently 50 years ago, uh, they, they lost some property there. Yes. Uh, and, and really, 50 years later, they're excited to get it back? Do they remember their names? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently across the country, thousands of Americans are storing fading documents that represent a piece of Cuba taken from them by Fidel Castro in the 1960s. Today, they could be worth billions. Yes, for U.S. companies like Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Colgate, Palmolive, and Texaco... Those papers are properties nationalized by the bearded Cubans' revolutionaries after they took control of the island. For movie studios like Universal and 20th Century Fox, they detail hundreds 
of confiscated film reels. In many cases, the documents have been passed down to children and charities. They meticulously itemize homes, ranches, farms, vehicles, cattle, and horses, all seized by the government then. A Holocaust Memorial Library in New York City is preserving a document listing paintings by Van Gogh, Picasso, Monet, and Renoir that were taken from the Havana apartment of its founder, uh, author Olga Lengel. In Miami Beach, a woman has stored away a stock certificate that clearly identify and certify that her father's partial ownership of a manganese mine in eastern Cuba. Quote, I didn't suspect anything would ever happen with this in my lifetime, says Holly Wallach, 69, whose father held a 30% stake in a Cuban mine. I thought maybe it was something for my children. Well, that way of thinking quickly changed for President Obama's surprise announcement in December that the U.S. would reestablish di- diplomatic relationships with its longtime foe. Now that both countries have reopened embassies in Washington and Havana, the chances of reclaiming their property or getting some kind of compensation is finally possible. Shortly after Castro's takeover, the U.S. Justice Department established a Foreign Claims Settlement Commission for American citizens and companies whose properties were confiscated. The commission approved 5,913 claims worth $1.9 billion, estimated at roughly $7 billion today. The U.S. State Department says it's already approached the Cuban government to begin those talks. <laughs> Oh, you'd want to be at that one, wouldn't we? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, reaching the agreement on resolving under- outstanding claims is often a lengthy process, but the department is committed to pursuing a resolution, says Deputy Assistant Secretary for Public D- D- Diplomacy, Gonzalo Garlegos. <laughs> yes, but it, as with most negotiations with the Cubans, mm, this one faces many obstacles, of course. For one thing, well, not for one thing, that would be two things. <laughs> No, for one thing, Cubans claim that they're due a big payday from the U.S. government that dwarfs any U.S. claims against Cuba. A Cuban court in 1999 estimated that the U.S. embargo on Cuba had cost its citizens $181 billion. And, of course, with our newfound friends and relations, well, that bill is due. <laughs> Well, the U.S. is, of course, sure to reject claims of that magnitude, even even so, at historic joint press conference in Washington by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Cuban Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez, to highlight the new relationship, the Cuban diplomat made clear his country will pursue them. The U.S. government has recognized that the blockade against Cuba is a wrong policy, causing isolation and bringing about humanitarian damages and provisions and deprivations to our people, Rodriguez said. Well, fine. Screw it. Close it up. Bring them home. Freak your little embassy. (laughs) Screw it. (laughs) Well, another problem is the $7 billion the U.S. claims doesn't include thousands of Cuban Americans whose property was confiscated before they fled to the United States. The U.S. State Department will only negotiate on behalf of U.S. citizens at the time of the confiscations. Cuban Americans will have to negotiate on their own. And won't that be fun? Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. That's your, your Cuban update today. Isn't that nice? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, let's talk. Uh, yeah. Let's go back to the start of the show. Let's talk Dominicans. <laughs> Not, not of course that I'm bitter. Of course, yes. no, 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 not, not in the least. But uh, it is in the news today, so I've got to let you know. You know, <laughs> can't just can't just skate on by it. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, I can. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Kiss, kissy wouldn't have a clue, so I'm good to go. Well, moving along today, Dominican Republic does fear tourism boycott over a citizenship ruling, and it's not, oddly enough, from the United States. <laughs> no. no, in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, yes, uh, Jude Peyot of Atlanta tried to cancel his $6,000 family vacation here after learning about calls to boycott this Caribbean nation for denying citizenship to thousands of Haitians. Uh, why the hell do we care if they give citizenship to Haitians or not? What the- <laughs> I, I don't. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm. No, but what? 
Well, I'm ashamed to tell my friends I'm here, says Peyute, 64, a native Haitian who immigrated to the United States in the 1980s as he walked around Santo Domingo's 16th century city. Quote, it's wrong for me to come here and support the economy of the Dominican Republic because they are racist and they have no decency and they treat people like trash. Um, he, he did immigrate to the U.S. in the 80s, right? <laughs> Okay, well, such strong feelings could force his country to pay a steep price in his dispute with neighboring Haiti if sought-after tourists decide to spend their vacations at other nearby Caribbean islands. At issue is the mass exodus of crowds into Haiti this summer because of a crackdown on non-citizen residents stemming from a 2013 Dominican Republic Supreme Court ruling that people born between 1929 and 2010 to non-citizen parents did not qualify as Dominican citizens. The decision retroactively has stripped away the citizenship of tens of thousands of native Dominicans of Haitian ancestry. The Dominican government subsequently created a plan to restore nationality for thousands of people who could prove that they were born in the country to non-citizens. The government also said it would grant legal residency to non-citizens, many of them Haitian workers, who could prove that they arrived before October 2011. What's the problem? That seems fair. <laughs> Well, last month, the government said that it would expel non-citizens if they didn't apply for legal residency by June 17th. Since then, more than 41,200 Haitians have voluntarily returned to Haiti, says Josu Fialo, an advisor for the Dominican Ministry of the Presidency. Immigration became the big issue after a catastrophic earthquake struck Haiti in 2010, prompting tens of thousands to seek refuge in the Dominican Republic. The exodus has led hundreds of people on Facebook and Twitter to call for a boycott of the Dominican Republic, and about 3,000 people have signed up for that petition at change.org, a group called the International Campaign to End Apartheid in the Dominican Republic. Yeah, you got your places screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's now apparently dedicated a website to the cause. Fialo told us today uh, calls for the boycott are not intelligent and not helpful. He said the Dominican Republic is working on Haiti on an immigration plan to send a boycott world hurt. No, not world hurt. Would hurt both countries. <laughs> oh, isn't that great? Well, you know, that that's what it is, Gilbert. Uh, it gets yes. it gets to the point where, you know, I, I get into some of these stories and there's so many goddamn foreigners. Yes. In it. <laughs> You know, I, I can't pronounce the names. I'm just going to call them all Desmond Tutu. <laughs> just... uh, we want our rights. We are Desmond Tutu. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we want our citizenship. I am Desmond Tutu. <laughs> Aerosmith Rocks is great. I am Desmond Tutu. <laughs> Well, we're worried at the time. We were concerned because people who suggest this kind of thing don't understand that this thing is going to hurt not only us, but our economy and also Haiti's economy, Fialo said. Yolinda Maria Gonzalez, an organizer with the New York City Adv Ad Activist Group, says we're all Dominicans. And no, I'm not. <laughs> We're all Dominicans uh, who was born in the Dominican Republic and moved to the United States at age seven. She hopes to discourage tourism to the Dominican Republic until the 2013 ruling has changed. Well, we are really trying to exert pressure any way we can, Gonzelli said. We're trying to say to folks who want to visit the DR that this is a government that is engaging in human rights violations. One of those who might be hurt by the boycott is Thomas Muesi, 58, a longtime tour guide who was born and raised in the Dominican Republic. He and many others here have close ties with the Haitian Dominican friends and don't want to see these people deported unwantedly. Moyus, a boycott, would wreck his livelihood, he says. If tourism doesn't come to this country, my many fathers of the family, including myself, will suffer and their families will suffer. Les Roos, a real estate lawyer from Cape Giardu, uh, visiting the country for the first time, said he would happily come back and recommend others to visit. I don't think boycotting the Dominican Republic is appropriate, he said. In a sense, you're sacrificing the people who live here or came here legally for those who came here illegally. Well, tourist Gwen Mosley, 54, a teacher from Queens, a section of New York City, in case anybody didn't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why that's there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, said a Haitian friend in New York begged her not to come. Throughout her stay, she said, the people assumed she was Haitian because of her deep brown skin and treated her unfairly. At her hotel, workers ignored her request for towels and sheets. Oh, yeah, drying herself with the shower curtain. <laughs> right. Apparently, in stores, people g gave her unpleasant looks, and at restaurants, service improved once people learned she was American. When people thought I was Haitian, I was insignificant, says Mosley, who is an African-American. So all the Haitians now are just telling them they're American. Yeah. <laughs> well, pharmacist Payute said he wouldn't buy anything other than food, passing up souvenirs and other gifts that might help the economy. His cousin, Sheila Serfoulis, who accompanied him on the trip, agreed. You know that as long as you have money to give them, you're going to be welcomed, said Sir Foulis, 36, a lawyer from Washington. But it's not because they appreciate and welcome everybody because of their color. Who the frick cares where the hell the money's coming from? Who cares? No, no, no seriously. Who cares? Yeah, it's, it's money. It's tourism. It's coming in. Who cares what the hell color the, the hand is that's giving it to you? Well, I don't know, but that's going to be a question for another bloody day. That's right. It is that time. We are out of here. Uh, hope you enjoyed your Thursday Double Double today, gang. Uh, HTLA Radio 1, New York, best talk right there. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, it's great having you every day. Louis, are you still awake, sir? Uh, it's just life, and I love doing it. I love doing these kind of stories anyway. That's good. That's good. And, and we only need to feed them twice a week. <laughs> Also, Gilbert, thank you for being here again today, and I uh, look forward to having you here tomorrow. Thank you for listening and support the show for the love of God. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, those social media links. Don't uh, forget to follow us on our Facebook page. There we go. On Twitter yep. and on Instagram. Damn straight. Good job. <laughs> And to HTLA at Radio 1's First Lady, Devlon Crawford, Sharon Chesley, uh, Leanne, uh, Intern, all the all the people yes. out there, all the all the listeners, all the listeners. Greg Howe figuring out the chat room for the Oh Yeah Right very first time. <laughs> <laughs> now, we hope you've made your Thursday a little bit brighter. And a reminder, you can come catch the show tomorrow, the Friday, Friday Frappuccino. Yes, that's it. <laughs> Friday. <laughs> Friday Frappuccino, 5 p.m. Eastern here tomorrow. Uh, be here or be squeer. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. And, uh, yeah, have yourselves a great night. We will catch you on the flip side.